welcome to the 78th Special Moves Podcast. My name is Michael Limbs. These guys are Jake Klukowski and Liam McKelvey. Hello. Hey, gamers. Um, how's it going? You had a good week? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Not bad. Um, oh, yeah. What have you been oh. doing? <laughs> You've been some casinos or something. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Mate, I th- I'll tell you where I've been going. Fucking nowhere. Nah, do you know what? It's like, I had a bit of an epiphany last week that I hadn't played many games. You could kind of see it happen over the past three or four podcasts. And then, so I, this week, I've just had the mad one. I've played, like, some new games. Like, I completed, like, a brand new game and uh, played Mountain Blade. And, yeah, and work's been steady and that. So, yeah, I've just, like, it's been, like, a good balance of everything. What about you? What about you two? Uh, yeah, just slow week. Played a few games. That's about it, to be honest. Yeah, nothing exciting. Literally, just not really <laughs> even left the house, to be honest. It's it's finally happened, doesn't it? It's just finally the lockdown kind of stasis has has happened, and we're basically slowly becoming them fat people off Wally, mm-hmm. where they're just floating around, look watching TV and that. <laughs> Um, not having to worry about anything. Yep. And that, that, I mean, I, I have been like that for a year, so yeah. <laughs> uh, w- welcome uh, to the future. Um, yeah, need it's advice, exciting. You know? It's an exciting future. Yeah, uh, sure. I, I've not played um, anything. I played Call of Duty with you guys and um, and I was eating some sweets at the time. And I broke my tooth mm-hmm. <laughs> as, we, as we were playing it, and that was kind of a bad experience playing the game. Yeah, so I was like, also oh, made you feel like you were in a battle a bit more. Yeah, oh yeah, it, it was some 4DX shit. That was for real. But I, <laughs> I, um, I was, uh, I was sort of, um, you know, didn't fancy playing much games after that. So I didn't. I haven't played anything. Um, mm-hmm. I've been having a little look on. Um, what's on the Switch eShop and shit like that. Mm, me um, too, yeah. I quite fancy Sunless Seas, which I didn't play. I played Sunless Skies, mm-hmm. yeah. which is like this top-down... Um, uh, uh, it's very difficult to describe, I guess, but it's very text-driven. Um, you know, you're know, reading stuff, like RPG-type role-play and stuff, which is like making decisions. And I feel like it could be a similar case to like Banner Saga, where it just makes a lot of sense on the, on the Switch, because you're just, you know sort of reading a book to a, to a certain extent. You're just making decisions, making choices, navigating the world. You're like a captain of a, of a ship, and there's a lot of this Lovecrafty stuff, a lot of tentacles and all that sort of basic Lovecraft sh- shit, which I'm into. So I think I might get some of these. It's about 15 yeah. quid. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm, um, I haven't played anything apart from COD, which is still great. Yeah, well, uh, Liam's been in the backlog, but I, I, oh, yeah. I forgot. I've played so many games, I even forgot a game. I played also with XCOM Chimera Squad. There you are. Oh yeah, how's Look that? Look at that. Yeah, um, <laughs> I like it, right? But the whole time, I was thinking, "Oh, is Mike gonna like this?" Do you know what I mean? I was kind of, you know, I'm feel, kind of feel power there. I'm That's kind cool. of well. Someone's got to play games for you at this point with you. And <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. So I played Mountain Blade and XCOM. I was basically, I shang sunged into you basically on Thursday and Friday. So yeah. Mountain Blade has been a bit of a tricky one because I only intended to play it for a little bit and I ended up spending 15 hours on it. Uh, it's incredible. Like it's one of those games where you go to bed thinking about it because it's your story. It really is your story. And even though there are like very generic things like um, all the quests are the same, pretty much. Like, you do a quest, transport these sheep to this caravan. But uh, they're all, like, weirdly specific, yet generic. Like, one is, like, I own the rights to this land. I am the landowner. However, there's some peasants over there that are on my land. Go over there and tell them to get off my land. Like, that's, I don't know, it, yeah. that exact quest is in, like, every town, pretty much. And it's, it's, I felt that to begin with. I was, I don't know if I was just getting some bad luck or something, but I, all I was getting was, like, the family feud quests. Yeah, where, yeah, where yeah. All the quests, they, they've kind of got a label, so you know exactly what's going to happen. So, like, yes. family feud is, is a certain thing to do with them. You go and try and talk to, you take an NPC in your caravan to another town, you meet another NPC, you try and resolve a conversation, and if it doesn't work, then there's like a fight. And But you know exactly how it's going to happen, and you know kind of, yeah, because it's the, this kind of mechanical, like, PC Master Race type game, you know exactly, like, how difficult it's going to be. You yeah. know how difficult bandit bases are, and you kind of yeah. you measure things on, like, a risk-reward basis. Um, is this worth my time, as opposed to, like, is this going to be fun? 
Yeah, yeah. and I, I found that that was like the yeah the kind of way that it was, like I, I fucked those quests off entirely at the moment now because like I've got to the point where I'm like a vassal for Batania, I think they're called like the guys yeah. on the top left, the ones the that are very. Yeah, basically the Celts, and like I've got to the point in the main quest where you can kind of decide what you're going to do with this power that you've got. You can either help rebuild the empire or help demolish it. So I've decided to demolish it. I've joined an army and I've like witnessed some big battles, which is what I wanted to do before I got yeah. to the pod. I wanted to see because like you know going into a bandit camp with like an army, of, well, a mob of eight people and taking the bandit king down is one thing, but. All the gameplay I see is all these, you know, riding through a desert on horseback with a couched lance or sitting on top of some battlements, knocking ladders off. And I wanted to experience that. I didn't know how many hours I'd need to put into it. But after about 10 hours, like I found um, like I was doing them quite regularly. Yeah. You could even do it earlier if you just join up an army yeah. straight away. But yeah, I, and I, in fact, like because I did so well in the, one of the battles, like I think I killed like 15 people or something like that. Like the Lord gave me the settlement that we just kind of well, almost raised it to the ground. So because of that, like, um, I've had uh, I've had a bit of a diversion from my uh, looting and pillaging for the for the Batania clan because now I'm kind of, you know, I've got this real estate that I've got to look after, innit? and all of a sudden, uh, and by the way, like, I'm like a foothold, like there's like a thin peninsula between our land and the land that we're at war with, and I'm like the first stop okay. after the peninsula. So it's like there's a lot of shit going down near me. So I can't help but think that that Lord has kind of fucked me over a little bit by giving me the troublesome place. But so whenever there's like an army of like 500 men, my my, uh, my army, my personal army is like 115 people, but his yeah. armies of like 500, 600. So yeah. they're, they're sieging me and then I have to like go, Melodia, come and help me. So it's great because it's like a complete, like, you know, that might happen to you, but in a different way. This feels yeah. like very personal to my character's story and like the role play element's funny i'm wearing all black i've got a bow and arrow but my backup weapon is a scythe so i'm on horseback swinging <laughs> and it's like that's what i really like it's it's a nice mix of like um yeah the kind of uh political intrigue democracy formation -y total war side but then you've got this like very selfish ego driven it's your story you're the hero of the story kind of thing so uh I found it's like very enjoyable. Like, like the the jank is there, but yeah. Um, so I played it like yeah, starting on Thursday, and uh, already the patches seem to have done quite a lot because a lot of the stuff I read online doesn't really affect me. It's ran smooth. I'm playing it on like super high on like a 1070, and it's uh, yeah, it's running really nice. Like it's it's been quite hot as well over here, uh, especially when I've got like a big attic window, yeah, yeah. and it just like mm -hmm. heats up this room. But like no, my PC's been running fine, which is like an issue that might put you off you know, when you're looking at getting an early access game. Is it optimized properly and is it too janky? Well, the question is like both of them are satisfactory. So yeah, if you're like putting it off, I would say take the plunge. Not normal, yeah. I think, but... It's, um, it's, there's a lot there already, isn't there, for like an early access. You can basically get a good like role-playing experience out of it now. Like you don't, you're not like, it's not like it's missing... Um, vast amounts of content, or it doesn't feel like that anyway. Like I'm, sh no. I'm sure they'll add stronger like story elements and things like that. You know, that's the thing, isn't it? The, release, but. the the quests and like when you go to a bandit base, like I've taken down loads of them because like I'm, I really like that bit, like the the infiltration at night yeah. with bow and arrow. Like it's it's just like really like the style that I like that started off, and I'm taking them all prisoner and then recruiting them all. So my mob yeah. is just all ex bandits. Yeah, love it. Mm. But there's only like two, no, three like maps for the bandit camps. Yeah. Yeah. And it just kind of flicks between them. Yeah. So I, I, I guess that's the kind of thing that we're going to see in the full release. More variety to hopefully those sorts of things. But um, yeah, like I, I really did intend to spend this much time playing the game. Um, but yeah, like that's the best type of game, really, isn't it? Yeah, c com completely. And, and I wasn't, you know, like I was saying when I, when I was playing it, I wasn't really looking forward to it for ages i didn't love you know i did like mountain blade but i didn't i wasn't like oh i can't wait for the next mountain blade game um so i so it was like a pleasant surprise for me as well i sort of was hovering over it for ages and i was watching people playing it and stuff and i, and I finally um took the plunge and, and i'm really glad i did as well i haven't played it in a little while but 
I kind of re-rolled and I and I really enjoyed doing that. Like in the same way with Divinity and stuff, where you just think, Oh, I'm gonna do this yeah. all again, I'm gonna do it completely yep. differently. And it's totally great to do that as well, because you just get a different experience anyway. Like you said, you've ended up in a certain situation with this settlement that you've got and a castle and stuff. You know, you could just not even go anywhere near having a settlement for a long time for a long time yeah absolutely. you could be like a roaming band of fucking I, whatever i you know? actually think a lot of people won't do that because like the only way i, I, can, I haven't yeah well i was thinking like the, the way i guess most people who play this game will want to establish their empire is to build it from the ground up like i fought as basically a mercenary then a knight for somebody else yeah. You know, so I it's not my story. It's Melody's story or whatever and I'm just helping him and I'm a lord of his his house. But a lot of people playing this game will want us will want the kind of rags to riches story yeah. because that's the kind of uh person that attracts and so because of that like I reckon a lot of people will go that route the slow way up and but yeah, the reason that I wanted to bring this up basically is because and this is going to sound probably quite inflammatory towards other people but hopefully you can see what i'm saying a yeah. lot of people who talk about these types of games um pc master race janky stuff are so desperate to like it going in that they make excuses for it and like they because it's like the anti triple a game like that you could probably have seen people talking about this game and be and, and throwing defenses its way in but i'm not i in fact if this game was shit i would have loved to tell people it was shit the fact that it was like just I'm playing it, not wanting to like it. I don't need if it's a Euro jank game like Kingdom Come Deliverance, throw it yeah. to the wolves. But the, I just want to give that opinion because sometimes you find that a lot of people talking about this sort of game are like that they're they're already invested into it before they start talking about it. So it seems a little bit like yeah, but yeah, but and there's a lot of that. So Com- completely, yeah. No, I, and and that's you know I guess that's what I was trying to say as well at the time when I was playing it. Like I I wasn't I'm not part of the Mountain Blade honest and of, true for you <laughs> about yeah. Mountain Blade 2 yeah, I, exactly. I'm not honest at all like I lie all the time um, yeah, so yeah. I'm not um, <laughs> yeah you're a Scot yeah you're part of you're a Freemason <laughs> you're part, uh, part of yeah. the media elite yeah, yeah. exactly so yeah it, it was, it's, it, I, I'm glad to report from that side you know from the fucking Illuminati that it's a good game so yeah yeah <laughs> <anyone> listening <laughs> um, oh that's cool I'm, gl- I'm glad you enjoyed it I mean it's it's um it's definitely one I feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna keep Mountain Blade on my PC for a long time. Uh, it's not it's not like a massive massive game in terms of like hard drive space. No, I'll just no. happily dive into it every now and uh, whenever I fancy it. Really, it, mm-hmm. it sort of lends itself well to that. Um, and they've basically been patching it. Every, yeah. every day, from what I saw when I was playing it, there was always an update. Like, well, yeah, when I went on. Uh, Steam, like you know, it comes up with like yeah, patch notes this, patch, and, and it's like yeah, I think it's patch note four point one point three, which implies yeah. a lot more <laughs> yeah. patches yeah. before that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, should we do an email? I got an email here from. Uh... Yeah, come on, it's our own email, isn't it? But we'll do it. We'll, we'll, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it. It is our only. It's the only email that we're going to read out. I guess uh, it's not like we're going to peak too early with the email, is it? Unless it's no. really. So, um, so if you want to send us an email, the address is dspecialmoves at gmail.com. Um, that's what Clark has done, who's from Fife in Scotland. Shouts out Fife, shouts out Clark, shouts out Scotland. 50 years old. So that's uh, good. Whoa, info. Man, that's sick. Yeah. Uh, Clark says, Dear Special Moves, um, I've been listening since the pretty good gaming days. I love the chat, it gets me through my Monday mornings. Like you, Mike, I scroll through my PS4 library every week looking for something I'm in the mood for. Download and I delete it soon afterwards. That's literally, <laughs> I do it all, all, all the yeah, time. Yeah, um, I go through phases. I love Bloodborne and all the Souls games. And I especially love The Witcher 3. And in my opinion, Days Gone is up there with them. The bike physics and shooting mechanics are great. Shooting a zombie in the face with a shotgun just feels right. The graphics are on par with Red Dead Redemption 2. The story is okay, and the acting is decent enough. I'm addicted to Days Gone, actually, and don't want it to end. I felt the same way about The Witcher 3, so I'm really glad I picked it up on the sale. Keep up the good work and stay safe. All the best, Clarky boy. Nice one, Clark. Um, I mean, we've talked about Days Gone a little bit, I guess quite negatively, to, you know... We did did the sort of video review on it when it came out. 
Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Liam got the platinum, remember? I did get the platinum. Liam got the platinum. I do remember, yeah. Mm-hmm. What did you th- what did you think of it then, Liam, at the time? Remind us. At the time I thought it was okay. Like, you know, I don't think it was worth the uh the full price on release for it, to be honest. Yeah. Uh because <clears throat> it was um it wasn't to do really with the game itself or the gameplay. It was more the technical shortcomings the game had. Like um Yeah. It was super buggy on release and I think there was at one point you couldn't even play the game because it would just hard crash your PS4. Like it yeah, just, overheating issues. Yeah, just shut it off completely. That happened to me a few times playing it. But yeah, it's like shut the, it off completely. Literally, the game would freeze. Yeah. yeah, the game would freeze, and then it just like you'd hear like a little click, and then just black screen. That was the, it. the Witcher Three did that to me. Mm-hmm. The Witcher Three right, did that to me. And uh, yeah. yeah, there was so the I'm. I, like it definitely needed more development time on release anyway and but like other than that i thought it was a it was a pretty decent open world game like it had like, the bike physics were good in it they were good on release to be fair the shooting was very um just i don't know really just like sort of serviceable it didn't feel great and the weapons yeah. just felt like yeah. they did the job rather than feeling like yeah this is good combat yeah it just felt yeah. like yeah, it's, it's shooting and it works. It's so important, that, isn't it? Because if, if it just felt great to, to shoot zombies in the face, I bet you that would have added, like, f- like five on Metacritic or something. Do you know what I mean? Like, whatever the Metacritic score is, it yeah. would have gone up by about five or six if yeah. it just felt That's great. That's true. That's true. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, um, it, it, was, it was a decent enough game. And from what I hear, it's had loads of patches uh, since then. And like they've added in like a new game plus mode and everything, and a photo mode, loads of different bug fixes and stuff like that. So by all yeah. accounts, now it's actually quite a decent game. But yeah, on launch it was uh, it was pretty rough to say the least. But like um, I'd say it depends how much. I think I said this back when we did our like video review of it or whatever. It really depends how much you like open world games. If you can't stand yeah. open world games anymore, Days Gone won't do anything for you. But if you're yeah. still into the idea of the open world, and especially, I'd say it was most similar to something like Horizon Zero Dawn's open world. Okay. Like, if you really liked that style of openness, then yeah, Days Gone would have been right up your alley, except when it wasn't crashing your PS4. But by all accounts, yeah. it doesn't do that anymore, and it goes on sale quite often. So yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd say like give it a look if you can see it for like, I don't know, 50% off. Yeah, I mean, it's on sale, or it was on sale. I think it still is, for like 20 quid or something. Yeah, um, you can pick it up physically for like 15 quid on those sales as well sometimes. I think I would get it physically, because I would definitely sell it on afterwards. Do you know what I mean? It's like one of it's one of them games for me. Where I would yeah. I would have a you know, I'd dip in and have a spin. and then. Yeah, then, of course. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's a it's, long um, game as well. It's like 40, it? 50 hours long, yeah. It's like Red Dead 2 length it was. So, yeah, like, I think do you, know, do you know what always sort of put me off? Yeah, is the a lot of the gameplay I saw was you kind of backpedaling and then shooting a, just a horde of zombies mm-hmm. running towards you, and then chucking molotovs into it and stuff. And I yeah. don't know what it is, but it just doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't strike me as being really fun. Just backpedaling away from zombies, yeah, mm-hmm. and then shooting them. There was then, a lot of that, and like the yeah. the hordes themselves became very quickly very non-threatening yeah like as yeah. soon as you be able as soon as you're able to like like make molotovs the hordes were just like what are you gonna do just keep f- lobbing molotovs at them and they couldn't <laughs> do anything to you <laughs> i remember i don't know how how did i play this i've played it was there a demo or maybe i played it at a convention yeah trade that- trade maybe Maybe there was like two levels. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was EGX like two years ago. There was two levels. One was like you go in and then you like you have to get from like A to B and there's a story B. And then the other bit was literally like just survive a horde mm-hmm. or you have to kill like a horde of like 400 or something. And I remember it, the guns feeling like pretty weak. It reminded me of like Ghost Recon Wildlands shooting, like just like a bit, you know, every gun felt the same. But um, I think like. My expectations are low for it, apart from what people are saying. Like, like this, I was telling you guys just before we started, second tweet I read this morning when I woke up was like a tweet saying about how this game is like really good and they picked it up not expecting much. And I haven't played an open world game in a while. 
unless you include mm-hmm. Mountain Blade into that. <laughs> but like it, other than that, like I, I'm not sat down on a console and played an open world game in ages. Like I can't think of the last one. Mm-hmm. Um, Final Fantasy VII right. doesn't count. It's su- super linear, really. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, to the point where like you pushed into a corridor every fucking ten minutes. But this is um, this is like a type of game I've not played in a, in, in actually quite a long while. So like yeah. I was tempted to get it, but. Instead, I've just got Nier Automata on the Game Pass. Um, but uh, is that open world as well or not? Sort of. A little bit. Depends what you're, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, like, well, yeah, uh, I, I, might, I might pick it up is what I'm saying. Days I think what all, if, if you've got any questions about Nier Automata, yeah, the answer is always, it just depends what you, mm. what you think. Yeah, you know. a bit, yeah. yeah. Maybe on uh, one of the playthroughs. Um. Yeah. Uh, okay, thanks for the email, man. That's, that's, that's a good one. Um, I think Days Gone is one... I can feel myself playing it eventually, but yeah, mm-hmm. it's one. It's one of them plus. that already has a quit, like quite a lot of supporters now that are going. Well, actually, not many yeah. people mm-hmm. gave this the time, and then yeah, I think people are quick to forget exactly what Liam said, which is dead important. That at the time, it was full price and super buggy. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if you're picking it up a year later for twenty quid, you're not going to have the same amount of problems as somebody who bought it for fifty. So. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, day's gone. I will say, if the whole like PS5 backwards compatible thing about games getting enhanced is true, Days Gone will be one game that can really benefit from a, a bit of extra horsepower. I think. Do you reckon? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's um, it was a bit held back by the limitations of the hardware. I think Days yeah. Gone, like it was, I think a, probably a bit too ambitious for its own good, and. Uh, yeah, could have used something a bit more. I think, I, um, you know, the pa- the power of the next gen is actually going to raise a lot of any like any game where you've got like a lot of stuff happening and where you've got even even stuff like um, I don't know, it's difficult to to think of an example, but something where there's just a lot of chaos and there's a lot of like dynasty warriors. I, gu- I guess you know something even, like that. I- <laughs> well, anything, anything where it's like Total War, where you can, the, mm. you know, there's settings yeah. on on Total War, the PC yeah. game. You've got like fucking all the graphic settings, but then the one that you really want is army size. Like, how many people can you get yeah. on the battlefield mm-hmm. at once? And you want to set that to like ultra, <laughs> but. It's not always possible, but it's the same kind of thing on 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 consoles. Like I, I remember playing For Honor. Do you, remember, you know the Ubisoft uh, yeah. melody thing? Yeah. Um, and I and I played it quite a bit on the PC, and then I went and played it on PS4 like a, a week or two later, and it just felt so empty because there was like six like NPCs compared yeah, to right. dozens yeah. on the PC. Like it was a massive difference. Yeah. Um, so I think I think. Even that, you know, that that's going to be a, a hopefully a very significant difference, like stepping up to the next gen. Mm-hmm. It's not all about just how it looks; it's about how much yeah. shit you can yeah. maintain on the screen at once. Like, um, I I know an example that fucking rat game in it. Uh, what's it called? Plague Tale, Innocence. Oh yeah, there was like loads of rats on screen. We could have loads more rats, couldn't you? There you go. <laughs> the it's, but, Im- imagine it though. There. Yeah, Vermintide and that sort of thing. Wave yeah. shooters, man. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, next gen, man. We're getting close. Like, what? Six months' time? We'll, well be doing... Hopefully, pod- yeah. Podcast like 100 will be, like, yeah, PS around the time of PS5. Special. More or Maybe. less, yeah. More or less. We, we don't the know world that. hasn't ended by then. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's the delay that I... Realistically, it's the delay that I think could be annoying like it just mm. could be like just not possible <laughs> you know they might just have to add another fucking six months to it mm-hmm. well speaking of like yeah. next gen i did just a quick one just a quick little detour did you see that rumor yesterday about uh horizon zero dawn being the trilogy and the second one's going to be co-op oh yeah because that would be fucking good you know then it'll be a ps5 title uh mm-hmm. horizon zero dawn, which is obvious but yeah 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 i just wanted to mention that because we just smoke spoke about uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. That it's not. It's going to be a trilogy, like just a set trilogy. That's yeah. what it's mm. been, uh, you know, spoken about. So yeah. Uh, um, so you played a bit of XCOM, um, Jake. You said you played a bit of the new. Oh, oh yeah. XCOM. Sorry, yeah. I went on a Mountain Blade tangent, which is exactly what happened when I played XCOM. Um, so yeah, I played a bit of XCOM. 
So yeah, Chimera Squad. I actually played a bit of XCOM 2 as well this week. I played loads, mate. I haven't played Metal Gear Solid 2, like, but but yeah, XCOM 2, I I put on after the podcast last week because I knew that Chimera Squad was on the way and I just wanted to refresh myself as to how it worked. Um, but you've got, if anyone listening, like, you know, I'm the wrong person to ask. Basically, I'm not very um, adept at anything past like, the first four missions of XCOM, but I think I get the picture. So Chimera Squad seems a lot more like beginner friendly in the sense that like um you get your hand held a little bit more throughout it the missions are like take place in like the, so the maps are quite big okay yeah but a map is like a world and each room is like a level if you were talking like you know old school mario games do you know yeah. what i mean yeah. so like first mission you, you're in some sort of like museum which is a good way of getting some exposition told about the history of what's happened between the, uh, you know, the alien boys and the humans. Yeah. So you play as a, the Chimera squad, which is uh, a team comprised of the aliens from the XCOM series, the humans and the hybrids. Cause this is like the sequel to XCOM two when, yeah, there's like a uh, peace on earth and all that with these, uh, these alien lot so you, they've got like their own powers and stuff like that so like you see a bit of mind control right in XCOM 2 with the aliens you can do that and you've got the hybrids which are like I haven't actually noticed like kind of what their specialty is they kind of they just do like what the humans do they don't seem to have like the barrier ability or like the the mind control abilities of the aliens okay. I guess the biggest two differences are the graphical style which is a lot more cartoony um, it's very comic booky. At first, like it shows off, like, like the intro cinematic, if you want to call it that, isn't even really a cinematic. It's just a series of like stills. Do you know what I mean? Like when I say animated stills, you're gonna be thinking that's very contradictory. But no, what I, I mean is, I, I can imagine it. Yeah. So it's like yeah. a truck going down um, a street, but nothing's moving apart from the truck's wheels. So it's yeah, just like yeah. an endless loop gif, yeah. if you know what I mean. It's that sort of style. So there's no like proper cinematics at first, and then there's just like these comic book talking head strips and stuff. Well, so you don't see any. They, they, they use that sort of thing in. I've seen that in like AAA games and stuff, and mm-hmm. yeah. I think it might have been like Infamous or sort of one of them type of games. You know, on oh, PS yeah. on three and yeah, it, it can uh, be quite cool. This is a police did it, if you can remember. That was like, yeah, wasn't it? Totally. Um, but but uh, anyway, weirdly, when you get into the mission, there is cinematics that are real cinematic. Oh. So that's confusing. But yeah, so like the missions always start with like these briefings that are kind of like that. You've still got your XCOM table, but the uh, you know you know like your mission control table that you uh you know like your hub. It's not a table, is it? In the X- XCOM two, but on this, it's like a war table. Well, it's, you know, a, it's a it's a kind of mat. It's a globe. Yeah, well, uh, you, you, you kind of got this in XCOM Camera Squad. It's like a big long table, and you pick your missions from there. But the, you'll notice the graphical changes straight away. And then the big change is that, like, you're a team of like four people at a time. You can yeah. kind of swap them in and out. They're pre baked characters. So they've already kind of got their stories written out for them. It's kind of reminds me of like a Mass Effect party or whatever, you know, any RPG party, but mm. Mass Effect specifically, because it's like this ragtag bunch of, you know, different species with mm. mm-hmm. and you control them in what i say is like the divinity original sin style of combat but i know other games have done it before it's turn based it's tile based it's action based but it's not team based it's you know like yeah jake will move then the enemy will move then yeah. liam will move then the enemy did it. so it's like it's individual um individually done so yeah you've got to then consider things like uh, if you move one character there to set up something for the, the next character, there's going to be an enemy turn in between. So, you, you know, with that, you can't kind of move forward in one unified force, which is, I guess, how I played XCOM 2 when I was playing. I'd get all of my characters into position, and then I would make a, a move. But on this, you can't really do that. You can't really bring everybody forward or get everyone into position. Um and that's kind of like, yeah, the, the big difference there. Other than that, it's like quite small maps. Like, So I was saying you're in this museum in the first mission. There's like a breach mode where it's kind of like over the shoulder camera, like what you get. Oh, I've seen this. Yeah, yeah. So you kind of just pick your breach points, you press the button, and then you've all got a turn where it's like, yeah, you're all 
doing one action or maybe two actions to mm. clear the room. It's like the breach and clear thing you'd expect. And it's kind of got the same camera as when in XCOM 2, like, you you know, you go in to shoot somebody. It's kind of behind the, uh, the shoulder. But then after that, you just basically clear the room. And that's like one scenario. Then the next room, you breach again, and then you've got another scenario. So, like, the map is split into these basically, like, little arenas. So it's like an, an arena-based, character-based, pre-built character-based uh, version of XCOM with, like, cartoony graphics. And... I like it, but I don't know how much people who like XCOM would like it because, from what I understand, like people who like XCOM, that the main things that they really enjoy is like the character um, continuity. I guess you want to say uh, where you know you, you can create your squads and you've got these stories and your characters like properly level up and but they can die at any moment and everybody's unique and different. And then yeah, you've got these big vast maps that you work through as a team whereas this you're working as a series of individuals so i don't know how against the grain it goes from the the rest of the series but it seems pretty cool uh the the wackiness isn't as uh jarring as you might think if you're a super serious strategy boy and you don't want to smile when you're playing the games because you've got to save the world from aliens then i don't think this will offend you that much but when you look at it, it looks very like Guardians of the Galaxy. But I think when you get into it, you know, and you're warm to it, you might like it. Yeah. So that's 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 based on like there, the, you know, just a couple of hours of XCOM Camera Squad. I don't think it's really going to change its tune. So I feel yeah. like that's a pretty fair intro on it, anyway. I mean, I I um I did think I was going to get it straight away. I just I'm not I just haven't got around to it. Basically, but you're um, still working as well, right? That's the, but, the thing. Yeah. An awful lot at the moment. <laughs> yeah, the exactly. Moment. It's, exactly. Yeah. It's um, I, it's I'm really excited about XCOM two on the Switch, and yeah. in this, I don't, I kind of, I don't know what it is about it. It, it just isn't. Um, even though it's like only eight quid, I just, mm. it's still there's something about it that isn't. I don't f- feel like a sense of excitement around it, like other people playing it. No one that I've seen has gone fucking. You know, it's really good. It's worth playing. It's worth the time. And uh, I, I think the prospect of XCOM 2 right around the corner, like handheld, is kind of like I almost want to keep my appetite for that fresh, if you know what I mean. Like I don't want to... Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 exactly. It's, it's a weird... I was just way. smiling because I was thinking you want to keep your appetite fresh for the uh, game you've already played. Whereas, <laughs> but, but, but but it's the full I, fat experience. You, you're yeah. right. It's like a diet XCOM, essentially. And it's, two, and it's two years ago or something that I played it, really. And... and um, it's exactly like what you were saying with Martin Blade. You just fucking roll, you know, you go in and you have completely different characters. You'll have different, the story will pan out different, differently. You'll have different random events and stuff. And it's a very, very replayable game anyway, XCOM. So on, on playing it handheld two years later is really basically exciting. It feels like, you know, there's a new experience for me to play. Um, I, I, I wonder how long XCOM Chimera Squad is, though. I wonder if it's like a. For eight quid, you know, it can't be a, a huge game, can it? No, I, I guess not. I, I don't think it would be either. It's like the closest I've come to it is like, um, uh, what's it called? Um, you know, Fire Emblem, but without all the wee be in between stuff. But it's yeah. it's similar to that. Let me, I'm just going to have a quick look though, because yeah, it is like you, you called it uh, last week when you said that it's like um, Total War fucking saga it says uh, on how long to beat it says 22 hours for the main story that's, um, that's not bad for 8 quid that's not bad that's and right. I, yeah 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 and, and when we say 8 quid uh, the price is going up in like 2 weeks or something which is mm. weird so the main XCOM XCOM 2 without the DLC the main story is like 31 hours whereas this is 22 so yeah War of the Chosen is 37 hours <laughs> So yeah, um, mm. it, it's uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like this one is one where it's funny because the XCOM fans are all cautious about it. Everyone I know who's into XCOM, yeah, sure, is, not, yeah. is, is, is very cautious and yeah. yeah. But then people who have like not really played the XCOM series before, if they ask any fucking person, should I start with Chimera Squad? What are the XCOM fans going to say? No, no. <laughs> so it's a bit of a confusing one. So yeah, uh, I, I would, I would, you know, give it a go for eight quid. To be honest, I, I was quite into it. 
I'm into I'm into this sort of thing a bit, like the turn based stuff, like Divinity I like and, and, and Fire Emblem and whatnot, but you know, uh I don't live and die by it. But it, it's pretty good, you know, it's 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 cool. I'm not yeah. sure how my decisions have really affected the story yet in three missions, but maybe that'll happen later. But I feel like you know, I haven't really got as much agency as I think playing it. My, you know what I mean? Whether I do a good job yeah, or not, yeah. doesn't matter. I'm just getting the job done. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Liam, you, you know you're playing your backlog, yeah? Yeah. What did you play again? I genuinely forgot what it was. Uh, So I played a bit of Tekken 7, just because why not? I forgot how much I liked Tekken 7, actually, but I only played a couple <laughs> hours and then uninstalled it from Steam. And, uh, was this after you sent us a bit of the old Tekken 7 music on the WhatsApp group? Yes, it was. I'm yes. going to get back into this. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, I was quite happy to get the 78 gig of hard drive space back. That was quite nice. Right. But, uh, yeah. but, yeah, like, Tekken, because I, I own it on PC and PS4, but I own the yeah. PC version with uh, all the DLC. So I'd not tried any of the DLC before, and it's good DLC, to be fair to it. Yeah. So, yeah, I had a quick go of Tekken 7. Sent these guys a bit of the soundtrack because it was a slammer. It was amazing. It's a good soundtrack. <laughs> it was yeah, a, it, yeah, it that track specifically is so good. But then, yeah. yeah, and then after that, I played Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, which I've had in my Steam library yeah. for. That's th- the one, yeah. I think I've had it there for about three years now. And uh, yeah, yeah, and as I said to these guys, it was just okay. I thought it was a very six out of ten game, to be honest. Because uh, did you? Yeah, like. I, I was saying, yeah, like, even though it only came out in, I think it was like 2014. Yeah. It, yeah. Today, so. it feels weirdly aged badly. Yeah. Like, like uh, it feels yeah. older than that. It does, yeah. It feels like yeah. a game that was, should have been out in like 2012, 2013 ish, you know, when, yeah. Yeah. when like the height of the Ubisoft open world formula was like at its peak, where every yeah. game had towers you had to climb different bits of the map you have to unlock, just icons yeah. littered all over the map, yeah. free running, Arkham style combat. Mm. So yeah, it just it felt like I'd played it a dozen times before, except this one just had the Lord of the Rings license attached to it. And, yeah. It's the nemesis system as well, isn't it, that elevates it? It's like, Definitely, imagine yeah. the Batman thugs in Batman Arkham, mm-hmm. if they fucking remembered that you'd kick the shit out of them and then, yeah, you'd, you they know, and, and they had... You the scars to show it and they, they you know if you um you know they they develop fears for fire and stuff like that and then mm-hmm. that plays into the stats so you can damage them more with fire and stuff yeah that's what makes it cool right? but the, i yeah, think yeah. the um y- y- you're probably bang on the money with the feeling age thing because i i i me and jake played shadow of war when that mm-hmm. came out we did a video on pretty good gaming about it and it was like i think we were both sort of a, Mm. It just felt like we. It was just a lot more of that. It was just, yeah. a, you know, kind of slightly expanded with this like siege military thing that you could have these big battles. But yeah, yeah. you could buy your orcs this time. Yeah, they'd added layers that? to it. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could actually buy your fucking yeah. boys like orcs I, live in chests. Like yeah, that's um, what that's what it. That I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I played it at the time. I think it was like the second game I ever got for my PS4. Actually. Mord, Shadow of Mordor? Yeah. Dest- cool. Well, like, well, third, because, like, I got Destiny. Right. And Last of Us Remastered came with it. Yeah. So then, yeah, I got I got Shadow of uh, nice. Mordor. And do you know what? Like, I'm just a big Lord of the Rings fanboy, and, like, there's no yeah. Lord of the Rings games, really. So I was well up for it. And I had a really good time with it. Like, oh, I, I loved it. Yeah. I hadn't really got tired of the towers and stuff. Like, you're saying, Liam, like, mm-hmm. if I hadn't played it and I played it now, it might be different. It might have been how I felt playing Shadow of War. I don't think it would have been pretty quite sure as... it would be, you know. I'm pretty sure because yeah, this yeah. is six years later now, so you, yeah. you know, that's a long time. And in that time, we've had like Assassin's Creed has changed, like Origins and Odyssey, the comp- yeah. different they put, games. They put the Nemesis system in. They put the <laughs> yeah, Nemesis system in. Uh, yeah. Horizon Zero Dawn, you know, has just polished what open world yeah. games like and that. And Days yeah. Gone, as many people would say. Yeah. Do you know and what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, so, so things like, have changed. Yeah, for sure. So like, yeah, it, it, it was interesting to hear that. I remember. Yeah, yeah I remember that. And then, uh, what else? Oh, uh, this very morning, actually, I started playing um, Journey to the Savage Planet on a uh, Game Pass on Xbox. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. What do you think? 
I'm quite liking it so far. It's very chill. It's nice, isn't it? Just going around. It's funny. It is fun. It's got a very um, adult swim sense of humour, I think. Totally. Very, like, absurdist, surreal humour. Like, very weird out there. But yeah, it's like it's nice just wandering around, scanning things, shooting things, collecting. Mm. It's a quite a chill game. Yeah, it is a, I like it. It's a very focused, um, funny No Man's Sky with, with yes. personality. It's kind of um, what I wanted No Man's Sky to be, to be honest. If it was more like this, I would have liked No Man's Sky more. No Man's Sky tweeted, uh, not tweeted, they they said to somebody that they're going to be doing even more ambitious things this year, like stupid updates. Or I mean, like, more ambitious than, like, the Rainbow update, or do they mean more ambitious than... To, to and... No Man's Sky? Yeah, yeah, they're going to go mad. Oh. I'm interested to check in again, but Jenny, that's how I remember it. You played it. I think I actually saw it at your house. You showed me and Liam, I think, and think just so. the colours uh, yeah, and, tiny and stuff bit, yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. There's a bit of shooting in there or not, boys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bit of combat. Yeah, I remember now. I Decent remember. combat as well. It's not like just put there for the sake of it. It feels good, the combat. Yeah. Pretty snappy, it's, isn't it? This and like the outer, not worlds, outer wilds. Like, yeah. so you, get, you are getting these like little well curated, hmm. focused, like you'd say, you know, lean sci fi games lately. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, between Outer Wilds hmm. and, and Genius of Such One, they're games that you probably wouldn't have seen hmm. um, maybe before. Give us a year. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I was going to say before In No Man's past. Sky, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But, but Okay. It's just kind of weird that you're getting this inspired lot. by the 50s pulp yeah, um, yeah. sci-fi stuff. It's pretty cool if you're a and space the, lover. There's this, there's a, a sci-fi game that's just come out on, I think, on console, so it's been out on PC for maybe a couple of years. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Yeah. Called Del- Deliver Us the Moon or something like that. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah. Where you yeah. play, and it looks, it looks good, but it's kind of, that's a, another common thing about these kind of tight, focused sci-fi games is where they're, they're kind of all about 7 out of 10 so that none of them have really stood out as being absolute yeah. fucking belters um, whereas this is this delivers deliver us the moon it looks good it looks like very atmospheric and yeah. it's you know uh, I, mean, I might buy, I might buy it I might buy it it's on the it's but on the old it, game pass it is it's, of course it is mm-hmm. so I don't need to buy it I'll Never do that game pass. nice one Game yeah. Pass has added bloody Red Dead Redemption 2 this week or next, that's isn't big, it? Isn't it? That's, that's a big, big. one. Uh, they have right. GTA 5 for a while as well, but I think that's going as Red it's Dead going. 2 comes. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> it. Because I've been playing, you know, if you want the weekly Game Pass update, listeners, I've been playing a, a little classic from the attic, uh, Metal Gear Solid 2. Nice. Right, which I've, I've only played it once, and it was as it came out, and I was one of those scorned individuals that loved the first one so much and got very 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 tilted about the fact that you aren't snake mm. um and then <laughs> really? about oh yeah <laughs> fucking it's snake man so you're playing it you i love old... it right. and then as soon as it gives you the old switcheroo and now of course i'm a wanker so i love it it's like yeah. the sopranos ending I'm kojima just like... has just got you yeah. to play 40 hours of walking across yeah Concept that so and you're, I, you're I, and more... that, yeah now I would look down on me old me and gone if you, if you don't appreciate art do you? It's not about you it's not about you you dickhead yeah. but at the time it was and I was very annoyed that I didn't get to play this thing I had to play as this fucking other guy so anyway but yeah I remember liking it by the end of it like I remember thinking it was pretty cool and I like the things that stood out were like the really absurd stupid boss battles. That yeah. are just stupid, like vamp and whatever the fuck. Um, and I remember it, a lot of it being like on some sort of tanker thing, yeah? That's it. But then Snake Eater came out, and that was like, pfft. like Metal Gear Solid 1 is my favorite, but I think Snake Eater is the best. So 2 is a bit of a Final Fantasy 8 situation where I know it's good, I just haven't given it a look. I so love I, it, man. I yeah, love well, it. so I, I, went, I went back to it, and uh, yeah, I, I've only just killed Olga. Like, I just had a little spin around, but I was, I was like, just fucking drinking it in. Like, I was walking around just doing little silly things like going in first person mode, aiming at people and saying, freeze! And when knocking them out and then picking them up and dropping them so they drop rations. I was just, I was really like, yeah, just fucking enjoying mm. it, you know? Do, do you know what I, I love about it, yeah? Is that, you know, the word the word cinematic gets chucked around for games a lot and it's, you know, it's to do with presentation and things like God of War and, and things like that where it feels kind of filmic when you're playing it and you're just looking at yeah. you know the way it's presented i think what's 
really great about Metal Gear Solid 2 is it's cinematic because it's a cinematic kind of situation. It feels like a fucking diehard film or something yeah. where you're on a tanker, yep. there's terrorists on a tanker, yeah. And there's uh, oh mate, there's yeah. Steven prisoners. Seagal was this close from a season. It's it's, oh. gr- it's fucking so good. The, the setup of it is so cinematic. If you're not, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's yeah. that kind of um, that, uh, all of the, the the story setups are so great. The, that scene at the, the end of the tanker cool. with Metal Gear Ray and Ocelot is so good. So, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, so, so it, it's yeah. I, I'm quite into the idea of it, but the thing is, like, I'm playing it and I'm like, yeah, but then I'm like. I've because like it's the HD collection. I know I'm like four clicks away from getting into Snake Eater again, <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> yeah. but no, yeah. I'm, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, do, but yeah, like, I, like I say, I've been, I've been on a mad one playing these games. But Metal Gear Solid Two is, uh, it's, it's certainly something. It's, it's great. Good. It it's is. great. It's man. good, you know. But uh, yeah, it's slipping deep. on the fucking seagull shit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> do just you know what the, I mean. The just the details. It's oh, great. Oh, oh, Olga's like on the floor. I've just beat her in a battle. She's there. I shoot her in the face with the old tranquilizer gun. Get a little phone call from that little bitch Otacon. He's like, Snake, you can't shoot on. I- Listen, Otacon, I can do That's what I want. That's a great impression. Yeah, Snake, you can't. But yeah, he's like, you can't shoot unconscious women on the floor. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do, Otacon. All right. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's filled with details. But what's yeah. even funnier is it's made me like go. Hmm, when I go back to Death Stranding in five years or whatever, then I- I'll probably appreciate it even more because it has those little details in as well. Death Stranding, mm-hmm. when you you know what you're looking for, and uh, yeah, so Metal Gear Solid is uh, is still holding up, man. The second one, though, I, like I don't know it well enough. I just remember like Snake calls himself Pliskin in a bit of it, mm-hmm. like awesome, but, yeah, it required. Pliskin. And I remember that. I remember the Colonel bit as well. But yeah, so yeah, Metal Gear Solid, that's what my Game Pass uh, life is looking like at the moment. Yep. I mean, yeah, then... That's good, that's good. Other than Game Pass, I said last week I was going to play a JRPG. I'm still trying yeah. to decide which one to play. But uh, And it's like, they're, they're getting released quicker than you can play them. Trials are. of Mana came out Well, I, I, I didn't even bother picking up Trials of Mana because like, I've got too many already. So I'm not going to buy another one just for it to sit there for like a year before yeah. I play it. Yeah. But yeah, it's... Uh, that's that's my gaming week, I think, covered. Game Pass and um, Steam Library. That's about it, to be honest. Well, there's there's a there's a few games to talk about for next week, but is there any uh, news headlines or, or anything like that that caught your eye this week that you want a quick chat about? It wasn't Ninten- a huge amount. Um, Nintendo getting slammed. Yeah, Nintendo got pwned. Tell me more. They got fucking hacked, didn't they? Well, so- what happened? Nintendo themselves didn't get hacked, but uh, some some Nintendo logins were required somewhere. Yeah. So you can... Uh, it's probably just somebody trying to find an easier way of getting their mates' friends' codes, isn't it? Uh, because it's a bit of bullshit. But yeah, Nintendo had some accounts compromised and like they were saying... And by some, Jake means 160,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is... Yeah. A, and uh, you know, people. half the amount of bells Liam's into Tom Nook for a new room in an Animal Crossing. So numbers don't mean anything to me anymore. I was so right? like, I got up this morning, turned my <laughs> switch on to find out that I'd missed uh, the whoever it is in Animal Crossing that sells the turnips. So that snotty little fucker. Yeah, so I couldn't even play the, the turnip market this morning. I was fuming. But sorry, carry on. That's 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 Liam's new gazebo gone. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? That's serious money, like. Um, but yeah. Um, let me see what Nintendo has said. Uh, they just asked people to turn on two-factor authentication. But well, yeah, they 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 said that they'll contact the, the people via email. I don't know if they're going to offer compensation and whatnot, but I just thought uh, that's there it. Was, um, it w- what was it? Oh yeah, it was like uh, people were waking up at like five in the morning to see their PayPal account had been charged four hundred dollars for V bucks and stuff like that in Fortnite. Oh really? Yeah, so it'll be it'll be shit like that one. Yeah. As far as I know, Nintendo said they've refunded um, everyone whose account was compromised and it was something to do with how you logged into the Nintendo 3DS and Wii U like that used a different login Uh, system and so they've disabled that completely I think and strongly so that's what that's that's what made it vulnerable then if you had one of those so yeah so some like someone somewhere got a hold of uh, these old like login credentials and was using them to get into people's Nintendo accounts. 
But right. then, yeah, so like um, they've disabled that. They've refunded anyone who was affected, and yeah, they're telling everyone put on two factor on your account just to be safe. Yeah, that's it. Because yeah, you know, like how you when you log in, you like if you go onto a website, it says like log in with Google, and you can click that button. Mm-hmm. There's the login with it was the Nintendo NNID, like the Nintendo Network mm-hmm. ID. And right. if you click that, you could get into people's Switch accounts with the yeah. Wii U info, and then. Yeah, switch connects your PayPal, doesn't it? So you don't have to like yeah. re-enter stuff. You can just confirm, and then so you could like log into Fortnite on that hacked account, attach your account to it, mm-hmm. buy loads of eBooks, unlink your account, and then the Nintendo doesn't store that you've logged in that right. So, man, the grind for eBooks still ongoing, mm-hmm. still fucking ongoing. Uh, I remember to go see the concert though, aren't they? Did you? Now that was weird. The that Travis was weird. Scott so this. <laughs> Yeah, right. Mike, do you know about this? Yeah, I read about it, but I didn't... Um, it was Travis you know, Scott. I saw the vert, like <laughs> someone reco- did a screen recording of it, and it was pretty nuts, to be fair. Like a giant, giant Travis Scott. Mm. Like, but then like, the blue. world was changing around them, putting them in the ocean and taking them to space and all sorts. Well, well what's with that then? So, like, did he pay them or did they pay him? Do you know. know what I'm saying? I mean, like, why did they need to do that? I think, yeah, just like, it seems like a promo stunt or something, doesn't it? Yeah. Because, like, Fortnite, like, the history of Fortnite is getting pretty nuts, isn't it? Because, like, so Dead Mouse did one. No one gave a shit compared to that. Because, like, he did one on Minecraft. Marshmallow did one. Then there was, like, the, uh, there was an exclusive Avengers showcase. Star yeah. Wars mm. had one. Yeah. yeah. Um, something, yeah, Avengers Endgame. It's a good question, oh, like especially when it comes to that of Disney shit. Like the you know putting Avengers, is that is that you know advertising that advertisement? Are they yeah. just selling like ad space well, that's what I'm inside thinking, like, Fortnite? Yeah, I was so Epic. Is, yeah, because that's the thing. Epic aren't doing that to raise the profile of Fortnite, right? Because that's what I'm, what I'm trying to say is. Fortnite isn't dying and Travis Scott fans aren't on the rise in some mad way. It's not that, like he's BTS or something. So, yeah. like, why do they need to do that? Like, but that, I, I, and out of everybody, it's why Travis with a musician? Scott? With, with, with a musician, it's interesting. Because, like, why... It, may, I, f- I feel like, logically, they would pay him, right? Or they would... They would, they would I, unless it's one of those things where out. it's like mutually like they're both like made aren't they so maybe it's like travis scott thinks it's a cool fucking thing to do or whatnot but yeah it's just it's very very odd Uh, he he twitch streams i know that but i just uh yeah i don't know i just think it's yeah there must be some money involved Mm. because it's It's really yeah i know what you mean it's not even like he had a new album or a single out or anything did he yeah it's literally just like an idea he had in la Mm. He knew a guy who knew a guy. But and they yeah, called that uh, Epic. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I don't know. It's weird that Fortnite is becoming a platform to mm. share news. Yeah. And, you, know, you could see a product launch being done on it, like fucking Coca Cola or something like that. It's just kind of very annoying from my perspective. Because I work a lot in this space anyway, where it's like right. the fine line between PR and advertising is already like a blur. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'll give you a real life example. Like with this game, Deliver Us to the Moon or whatnot. Yeah. I only heard about that because I checked my work Slack today and it, we posted it on there because you're a gamer doing a console giveaway for Deliver Us to the Moon. Right. Right. Which is just interesting that you're a gamer are doing giveaways mm-hmm. that's clearly going to be sponsored. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they haven't even reviewed the game. Because that's the thing, I thought, well, while I'm on Eurogamer and they're giving away a console about this game, why don't I just go and have a look at what the game's doing? Like, they haven't even reviewed it. Yeah. So does that mean that they've... Have they taken money to do that? And in which case, then, is that not advertising? So, like, what I'm saying is, like, I'm always caught up in this weird fucking thing. I don't really like it very much. That You know, I don't know. The game is just... The game itself, not the industry... And I'm not calling the industry the game. I'm not Omar from The Wire. I'm saying like um, when the, the game of Fortnite is now like just becoming some sort of weird machine. Billboard. A billboard, exactly. Yeah, an interactive billboard. Uh, it's the future, but is it bleak? Yeah. I don't well, know. let's think about that as we discuss <laughs> next week's new games. Okay. okay. Um, so I mentioned it. Uh, this, this is the new releases for the coming week. Yeah. The end of April. It's fucking 
flown by as far as I'm concerned. It's been a mm -hmm. fucking quick month, but um talked about this quite a bit already. I'm really interested in playing it and I haven't installed it yet, so I need to fix that and download it tonight. Um Gears Tactics Oh yeah. Uh, is out on the twenty eighth Tuesday. Uh, which is Tuesday, yeah. yeah. Um this is uh an Xbox Game Pass release because mm -hmm. it's a Microsoft exclusive. It's kind of like an XCOM. We've talked a lot about XCOM. Uh, Turn-based strategy game. It looks very similar to XCOM, but it, as far as I'm concerned, it looks like they've done quite a bit of stuff to like you know make it feel like its own thing, make it feel different. Um, there's a kind of more of a gr an aggressive feel to it where you're like you're in cover, but you're kind of uh, the way you kind of sweep th forwards through the enemies is quite different to the way it works yeah. in XCOM, where you can be a bit more. Um, you know, defensive. Chainsawry. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Chainsawry, blood and gore and stuff. And uh, a lot of big biceps and shit like that. Yeah. Um, yes. yes. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I, I'm, I'm, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't immediately sound like a hugely thrilling prospect. You know, Gears Tactics is kind of a tactic spin off of an existing IP, is, you know, mm -hmm. but it, it looks, but the, the, the impressions that I read have been quite positive. And it's on Game Pass, so I'm gonna. Am I right yeah. in thinking it's actually developed by the the mainline team as well, Coalition and all that? I believe so. Yeah. Unlike yeah. Chimera Squad, which is was developed by different people, this is developed by the boys, the like people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to me, that's always a good sign. You know mm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. I mean, it makes sense. You know, Gears of War is a cover shooter. You you play the Division and the Division Two especially, and there's there's a lot of like XCOMy ideas mm. in it like they're, yeah, 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 they're yeah. bleeding into like a third third person like cover shooter um so i'm into that i'll get i'll play gears tactics for sure nice. i think uh telling lies is out on the same day um yeah, the, on the console Switch, port yeah yeah ps4 and xbox um do, do you guys know about this what is it i think did we speak about it last week um, Might have. maybe it was in an email about different ways of um sure, yeah. telling oh, a story telling, yeah yeah, and mm -hmm. it got a brief mention because I, I spoke about her story. Mm -hmm. This is the same guy. So um, it's a game where you're kind of uncovering a mystery. I think it might be a murder um, through uh, uh, like some sort of anthology of vlogs. It's kind of Black Mirror-y. It's got like yeah. some, it's got like real actors in it. So it's, it's very, uh, you know, the production is uh, just probably a tad bit higher than this very podcast that you're looking at right now. But it's just kind of very <laughs> grids Find and squares. Uh, and, uh, it's got like some of the actors from Westworld in it. Uh, is it like, uh, what's his name? Like uh, Logan Marshall Green, maybe? Is he yeah, in it? I think so. Um, and yeah, so there's a couple of well-known actors in it. It's kind of that her story vibe. It's not going to be like a game where the gameplay loop is you know uh, the main feature but it's more about the story so mm -hmm. yeah it, it's got some really good reviews on um uh on on the internet in general because it came out on pc and i think it was actually out on phones as well like mm -hmm. over two years ago now so yeah. the only thing with those sorts of things is it's like a very tactile game how you click and move and interact with the screens and things like that i think is very dependent on um the, uh, sorry the enjoyment is very dependent on that so a console port might be very clunky so i'm interested to see how they do that they can yeah. make it feel good to type stuff into search bars and click on mm -hmm. different windows and tabs and make that feel like kind of native to the consoles then i reckon it will do well if you're into that one specific type of game mm -hmm. narrative driven yeah. yeah um i think like you said the, the game feel this is really important isn't it like this you know <laughs> it's worth yeah. So much you can be as interesting as you want, but it's got to feel feel good to play. So, a um, couple of days later, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two mm. uh, remaster is coming out on PC and Xbox. Um, so this was Liam. You've already played this, haven't you? On yeah. PS4. Uh, weirdly, it had a one month exclusivity on PS4 for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, who knows? Who knows what deals go on? But. Um, <laughs> If you've Travis been waiting Scott. for that, on, <laughs> uh, been waiting for that on PC and Xbox, yeah. then it's on. Just the campaign. It's pretty good. It's pretty yeah, the campaign, right? So yeah, it's pretty good. You said, Liam. Yeah, it was a. It was quite a good. As far as remasters go, it's probably one of the better ones I've seen in a long time. Like, 
yeah. completely redoing maps, character models, and textures. It wasn't just like, uh, let's bump this up to HD, put some trophies on it, and throw it out. It was a, yeah, they actually like went in and re recorded voice lines. And I, I think there's probably like side by side comparison videos out there. Just like if you. Digital Foundry did one. Oh, yeah, yeah, probably. Then, yeah, just go have a look at one of them and you can see like it's actually a pretty huge difference what they've done, to be fair. But yeah, it's yeah. a only campaign, no multiplayer, no spec ops, just campaign. So, yeah. If you, if it depends on how much you liked the uh, COD campaign, to be honest. Um, and then Streets of Rage 4 is out the same day mm. on I'm interested PC, in this. I'm going to play this. Nintendo Switch, PS4, and Xbox. I was just talking to somebody before this who's playing it right now. Yeah. Nice. Uh, what do they say? I love Streets of Rage. <laughs> supposed to be good um yeah i'm 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 really looking forward to this i love the art style like mm-hmm. some people hate it but yeah could, because it's one of them like if you think to streets of rage now right the art style could work now you could release mm-hmm. the exact same art style now yeah streets of rage yeah. 4 could look identical to streets of rage 2 and people would lap it up so sure, changing sure. it to this kind of like vector flat color icon and style of I artwork like it. It could, yeah but it's oh yeah um I, I love I love the aesthetic of it and uh, the music is good from what I've heard already. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'll definitely definitely get this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I know we've mentioned it a lot already. It's on Game Pass. That's all you need to know. It's we did it, Game boys. Pass. We fucking did it. <laughs> That's it. Microsoft meaning it. We don't have to pay anything. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not buying Gears of Tactics or Streets of Rage this month. So boom. Not that you know. Not bad. Well, wow. but you kind anyway. of are though. Right? You, you, you've you've already paid for access, haven't you? That's the thing. Yeah, you, I paid. Yeah, you don't you don't buy to you don't pay to watch fucking. I bought a kind of rock store, right? And it gave me like a week in it. So, do you know yeah. I mean? so yeah. Uh, any, any other games you want to mention? Uh, uh... No, I think I think uh... prick. No, I'm joking. Why? I'm joking. Why? Like all I've been like. For the past three months, I've been gathering oh, right, my friends yeah. like Sauron in the well, fucking listen, east. Can I? Can I just tell you something? Yeah, it's not on Wikipedia. Okay. <laughs> so, what do you want me to do? I don't There's know. A, mate. I don't know. The only yeah. other game I know out this week is Sakura Wars, but that's if you're only into like your deep dive JRPG yeah. dating yeah. sims. And tell me, Jake, is that what you're upset about? Is it no, Sakura Wars? It's not. <laughs> I, I work with Sega on some games, right? Uh, yeah. I'm not working with them on Secure Wars. And I know I didn't know what this is. And all week I've been getting emails from people saying, uh, Jake, are you working on... No, I'm not. Stop asking me about it's this. people so know key what their to... anime waifus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, people who I won't mention. Um, <laughs> no, right. Here it is. The Probably the best game of the year. From, well, no, definitely the best game I've played this year. It's so much fucking fun. And I'm going to do a separate video on it. Legends of Rune Terror launches on the 30th. It's been in beta for like three months. I'm so fucking hyped for the full game to come out. They're basically doubling the amount of cards in it. It's a Riot Games special. The people that have brought you League of Legends, the people that are currently bringing you Valorant. I know it doesn't matter unless you're really into card games or whatever, but it's the best card game I've ever played. It's the most fun I've had, like just spending time on my phone, chilling, playing games. It's coming out. It's the and this is the crucial thing, right? If you only listen to one thing I say about this game, it's a card game where you don't have to fucking pay any money to get the cards. It's not like Hearthstone where you can get beaten by a South Korean fucking billionaire who's bought the best cards. You don't have to spend £180 on this like it's a crack addiction, like Magic the Gathering. You don't have to spend a penny on it. I have every single card in the game. I'm Master's Rank, basically. Well, I'm Diamond 1, guys, all right? So fucking, I like free wins over Master's Rank. I I haven't paid a penny, right? It's the most fucking incredibly balanced card game I've played. Um, I love it so much, and that's out on a thirty on mobile and on PC for free. And I can't stress this enough: it's free. Even if it's just to get a card game where you don't have to spend any money, it's worth it. If you're interested in collectible card games or anything like this, and you want to play one that's like a bit more serious in Pokemon or Yu Gi Oh, but you don't have to you know, be a proper basement dweller like magic, uh, then um, you should get it. It's it's fire. It's it's like the most fun. It's, I reckon I've put about 150 hours into it. Easy. 
I put about five hours into it today. So do you know what I mean? I think I think you should take it upon yourself to get on that Wikipedia page <laughs> and add Legends of Rune Terror to the games yeah. that are coming out next week. How are they going to sleep on a Riot Games game though? It's not like they're some small fry company. Do you know I what I mean? Know. Unless they put it Perhaps on. It's because it's... Was Go on, it, I'm sorry. I was just say, was it in? Was it open beta when you started playing? Yeah. So, so unless they well, put it on back then, maybe I don't know. Yeah, yeah perhaps. maybe. So the game comes out on Thursday, but the patch to put all the new content in comes out on Tuesday. Um, right. So, so basically, it's out on Tuesday for me. But um, yeah, if you if you want to, if you fancy a game that you can play that you don't have to like. You just want to play a strategic game and you don't want to play chess, but you don't want to have to click loads. It's well worth it. I can't stress this enough. I, if this isn't my game of the year at the end of the year, I'm going to be very, 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 very surprised. I'm very surprised. <laughs> like, right. But who knows what tactical Japanese role-playing games will be coming out on the Switch. <laughs> who knows Yeah, which band of weebs are coming to sweep me off my feet. <laughs> Maybe I'll get Sakura Wars. We'll see. Yeah, who knows. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening and everyone on Twitch. Thanks for watching. Um, remember, if you do listen to the Special Moves podcast regularly, you can watch it um, going out live on Twitch now if you want. Um, mm-hmm. On Sundays, usually about 2 o'clock. Um, we're also available on where the hell are we? Like iTunes and well, Spotify, Spotify, iTunes, pretty much and all that. everywhere. And you know what? Well, well, see here. If you've got this far, right? You're kind of enjoying it a little bit. You might as well just give us a five star review. Just click on it. Give it yeah. a review. Do you know how much it helps us so much? Like, mm-hmm. if you want us to keep talking about new games, we get new games by emailing people and saying, "Hello, we're a podcast that is like this highly rated." Mm-hmm. Every five star review you guys give us means that we can propel ourselves into the fucking hands of Sony to get Neo 2. This, this, this. Do you know what I mean? So help us help you help us. And um, just give us a good review if you want. Spotify, iTunes, we're everywhere else as well. Podbean yeah. and that. We're gonna. Re- the only thing that we don't have everywhere is our Patreon podcast, which we're going to record right now, where we talk about... Well, it's normally TVs and films and sometimes food, but last week we ended up just speaking about games more yeah. than the regular podcast. So yeah. Yeah. we're going to record that now for our, our patrons. Um, but yeah. Stay at home, gang, innit? That's it. That's it. Um, Thanks, everyone. We'll see you again next week, I guess. Bye-bye.